We all know how important seeing representation on screen is, getting to a point where sapphic representation is today where we are now seeing multiple good quality sapphic led shows on our screens has been a long journey. It may even feel like there is so much woman love woman content out there that it's not possible to see it all, but the moment you apply an intersectional lens, be it race, gender identity, disability, you see in fact that there is vastly less available. And so it is with trans women who are also attracted to women. With help from some of you on my community tab, thank you to those who helped me out, I've come up with a list of seven sapphic trans women to check out in film and TV. If you're aware of any content with prominent sapphic trans women, this is probably one of them. The show follows a group of teens as they deal with life, or sex, drugs and violence as IMDb puts it, where Jules is a transgendered 16-year-old who has already dealt with a number of tough things in life from depression, gender dysphoria, and a mother in rehab. She and her dad are new in town, and she quickly catches the eye of Rue. They develop a friendship that borders on more, but Rue's drug addiction is troubling for her. While she starts out the series having encounters with men, she develops feelings for Rue. I haven't watched this series, so I can't say much more about it, except that the quality of the show looks outstanding. Just look at the cinematography. But it also looks like a pretty tough show that explores a lot of trauma. It's gotten a lot of attention and a ton of high profile awards. It reminds me of the TV show Skins, home of the Nomaly ship from the late aughts early teens, but for a new generation. I have, however, watched Her Story, an Emmy-nominated web series that I mentioned on my top 10 web series video. It focuses on two trans women in LA. One of them, Violet, is also into women. Ali, a journalist, asks if she can interview her for an article she's writing, and they hit it off. As feelings grow, Violet is also dealing with an abusive relationship she's in, and Ali is dealing with the casual transphobia that her new friendship elicits from her lesbian friends. There was a lovely chemistry between the two women. We also get to follow Violet's friend as she navigates dating and the challenge of revealing she's trans to a possible lover. I thought it was a delightful, well-made series. I'm going to let you in on a little behind the scenes trivia here, but every time I talk about Boy Meets Girl, which I have a few times now on my channel, it ends up being the most replayed section of that video. So this film clearly gets attention. It is a delightful and well-made rom-com with Ricky, a bi-trans protagonist played by the very winning Michelle Hendley. It's summer and she's waiting to hear back about her application to fashion school and hanging out with her best friend Robbie when she meets Francesca. There's an immediate connection, things start a-brewing and blossom into an affair, but maybe things are also a-brewing with her friend Robbie. This was a film I didn't know existed until Adelaide Taylor recommended it to me in the comments, so thanks for the recommendation. I did know about the actress Nicole Maines, however, who played Dreamer on Supergirl. This film follows Laurel, who is moving to LA to hang out with her brother for the summer. On her first night there, she goes out and meets a girl who takes her to the rooftop and, well, vampires. Her transness is only alluded to in the most opaque of ways, and for a while I was wondering if the character was actually cis, which would have been awesome for Nicole Maines to play cis, because let's not typecast trans actors to only play trans, right? In this case, she was, since it says so in the movie synopsis. But if you hadn't read that, or you didn't know Nicole Maines was trans, you could very well not realise that that's what they were referring to. The film ended in a way that felt like it left it open for a sequel, but I didn't see anything online to indicate a follow-up was planned. I felt the script lacked a certain punch to make it stand out, but it's still a fun and delightful find for those searching for sapphic trans representation. This was my introduction to Jamie Clayton, who is, of course, appearing on the L Word Gen Q. She plays Nomi Marks, who, along with eight other people scattered across the world, discovers that they are mentally linked together, but this discovery also means that they are hunted by people who feel they are a threat to the world order. We also get to see Nomi be in a loving and supportive relationship, which is heartwarming. The series is made by the Wachowski sisters, trans women themselves, and in case you didn't know, the makers of The Matrix, so it's no surprise that this show garnered a loyal following. Now, before I continue my list, I did want to make a little aside and touch on the fact that the rest of the list were played by cisgendered men. Why does this matter? Well, as a cisgendered woman, I don't claim to be able to speak for the trans community, so please let me know in the comments if I'm off the mark. But from what I've understood, it's important, and I think Nick Adams from GLAAD articulated it well. 
Cisgender people playing trans people reinforces in some people's mind that trans people's identities are not real, that it's a costume, a show, a performance, that fundamental misunderstanding about who trans people are is toxic and it can lead to violence. With this understanding, it's a shame that trans actresses didn't get to play these following roles, but I think that they're worthy entries nonetheless. While Judy, the trans woman in this film, was played by a man, it was still an absolutely charming indie rom-com. Set in Canada, it follows Maggie, who is just starting a relationship with Kim when her mum decides to turn up with her brother, fully unaware that her daughter is a lesbian. It makes things a little awkward. Maggie works at a queer bookstore where the owner has caught the eye of Judy, who sings at a local gay bar. Judy strikes up a friendship with Maggie's mum, and uh, I'll be real, I was shipping these two for a bit. And while that didn't happen, Judy does end up finding a little slice of happiness with the woman of her dreams. It was the secondary storyline of the film, but it was definitely my favourite, and came wrapped up in the sweet and fun 90s classic. I haven't had time to sit down and watch the three seasons of La Casa de las Flores, or House of Flowers in English, which is a satire of the Mexican telenovela and made for Netflix. From what I can gather, it features the transition of Maria José and how she navigates this with her ex-wife Paulina. This takes place with the backdrop of a family in chaos after the scandal where the family patriarch goes to jail because of illegal affairs done under his name by his secret mistress, and of course, that is just the beginning. From the clips I've watched for this video, it looks like this is some solid representation and ultimately a lovely love story as Maria Jose and Paulina find their way back to each other. Before I go, I wanted to highlight a couple more pieces of media that included sapphic trans women. During the aughts, All My Children, the US soap, introduced Zoe, a trans woman who hasn't yet begun to transition. She's something of a rock star, so that makes things harder, and she's afraid to transition because of all the unknowns. She strikes up a friendship with Bianca, the longtime resident lesbian, and starts to develop feelings for her which are reciprocated. It's to Bianca that Zoe confesses that she is trans, and we then follow her as she begins to transition. The storyline starts in August 2006 and goes until April 2007, and I know a number of clips are hanging around on YouTube. I don't know if the episode Here She Comes Miss Amphipolis from Xena Warrior Princess qualifies, because it's not clear if Miss Artifice is trans or a crossdresser, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Before Miss Congeniality did it, Xena had to go undercover to discover who was trying to sabotage the Miss Known Universe pageant being run by her friend Salmonius. While investigating, she clocks that one of the pageant participants, Miss Artifice, is hiding a secret. Miss Artifice ultimately wins the pageant, although I do wish it had not been by default, and lands a smacker on Xena, much to Gabrielle's joy. As it's not stated what Miss Artifice's identity was, we're left to assume what we want. And let me know what you think. Another one I'm not sure if it qualifies is The Danish Girl, a historical drama about a well-respected Danish painter transitioning. While Lily stays with her wife, it does appear that the relationship becomes platonic, in the film at least, and it's implied that Lily is attracted to men, and of course there's also that ending which was not fully historically accurate, so let me know your thoughts on whether this qualifies as a sapphic trans film. That's it for the list, please make your additions in the comments, check out my other videos, and until next time lady lovers.